upstairs. You can sit there. No, just... no, no. I'll head upstairs because I... I. You want to minutes. pop in and say hello? Are you recording currently? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Be shy? Is no, that like it's... you to get shy? No, it was a different kind of audience than what I'm used to, you know? I'm... Neil's a rock star. I'm not a rock star, but... Hang on. We'll have to oh. shimmy over. Hang on. Uh, Oh, hi. See, I'm not used to this. Like, I keep on, like, I'm at what, where am I going to be looking? I keep Pick. looking. Oh. oh, and then you're wanting to join as well. Come on, Pickle. All right. There we oh. go. Family all in together. Family photo. <laughs> yeah. Say hello. <laughs> hi. Hi. Yeah, I'm totally... I'm not used to like a knitting audience. I'm not really used to an audience, to be fair. <laughs> well, say hello, Nanga. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm the one who edits all this. Yeah. This is Neil, the editor. Um, amongst other things. Yeah. Okay. I think I've said my piece. I'm gonna yeah. go. All right. Love you. Love you. <laughs> okay, I think that's him sorted. Hi everybody, welcome back to Lally Me Knits. Um, I'm on schedule, look at me go, look at me go. Um, thank you so much for your little comments on the last video. I'm feeling much better. Got my knitting mojo back. Which is nice, I was feeling a little bit drained last time. But I had a couple of weeks, had some time off, and feeling good. Feeling good, and I hope everybody else is feeling good. Um, if you're new here, I'm Natalie. I am a knitter. Um, I live in Belfast. And this is my little uh, podcast where I talk about knitting, mostly. You, can you hear Henry? <laughs> He's been banished upstairs with Neil so that he doesn't bark at the window and distract me while I chat to you. Oh my god. Bark a little dog. Um, it's going to be a little short one, I think, because I only have three projects to share with you today. But um, I'm sure that's okay. Nobody needs to hear me rambling on for any longer than I need to. Um, so let me think, what have I been doing the last couple of weeks? So since I last spoke to you... Um, it was Easter, so I had a good chunk of time off work, which was much needed, um, and it was nice, and it was my younger sister's birthday, so all the sisters came back home for it, a couple of sisters live in Edinburgh, and I, one sister lives in England, so everybody came back, um, for Yumi's birthday, and it's so weird having all of us together again because there's five of us five girls and we take up like any time we go anywhere we take up most of the cafe um so yeah it's nice having them back I miss them when they go back um but yeah so a little bit of family time a little bit of running up and down home again and yeah and then we got flew in and I cast on a new little project one if not two, two new little projects and I've got a finished object as well. So that's good, I'm excited. But I've not a huge amount of knitting actually done. That's not true. But I focused on like one specific thing so you'll be surprised when you see it. But um, yeah, that's what we've been doing. Apart from that, the weather's been much nicer in Belfast this week. So we took Henry to um, Glenariff um, nature reserve which is in the glens of Antrim up in the north coast um, Glenariff is this beautiful um, protected forest type area they've got lots and lots of waterfalls so we did the little waterfall trail um, Henry loved it it was a bit mucky it had been raining the day before but we didn't care we took a little picnic and we took Henry and we took our time walking around those and it was just really lovely. Um, felt so good to get out 
and get a bit of fresh air and get out of the house <laughs> for a little while. So we did that. Um, what else have we been doing? Um, my sisters came with me to get my little ear pierced and it's very sore. Um, but I'm glad I got that done. Um, work has been going back to normal, which I'm very glad about. Um, I'm back to editing my little medieval texts for my anthology, doing a little bit of transcription from manuscripts. I have to organise a couple of little trips to archives, which will be fun. And yeah, things are getting back to normal there, so that's nice. It's nice to get a little breather and get back into the swing of things after it's been a bit hectic. Yeah, that's been my week. Um, let's get on to the knitting content. First of all, I'm wearing, I can't remember if I wore, the, I wear this all the time, I can't remember if I was wearing it in my last one. This is my spring sorrel. Uh, this is the first one I knit and it is knit out of Giddy Ant Yarns in their DK, in their colourway Leprechaun, which I thought was very fitting. So yeah, I have this on. I may as well leap into my most exciting project cast another one on. So I've knit this one. I've knit a purpley pinky one from yarn from Pixie Yarns and I cast another one on. Seems to be a little tradition I have. Um, so it's in my Odie Locatelli and the Grocery Girls bag which I love. It was so expensive because it shipped over from um, where is Hohe based? South America? It's very expensive shipping it over, but I love it. So anyway, I'm knitting this out of Pixie yarn um, in her, um, I think it's called Hey Little Apple Blossom uh, colorway. This was a DK set of five skeins. And let me see if I can hold all five up to show you. I've probably shown this before now, but here are my colors. Um, they go on a fade, this one, this one, and then the reds kind of fade in together. Wait till you see this. <laughs> I can't believe I've knit so much of it. I knit the, mo the majority of this on my week off, where I just got sucked into it. And it's a crop top, it's in DK, so it went by so fast. She's on the ribbon. Oh, yes. So it's different enough from my purpley pinky one, which is important. I have three now of the same top. I do need to mix it up a bit, but look at this fade. And all I did was, uh, it fades look better because this is stuck in it, reverse stuck in it. All I did was swap, alternate the two colors. You can see better in there. Do a little stripey stripe. For my third spring sorrel. This pattern is by Wool and Pine. Um, and I love it. Now these do take a little bit of a wee bit longer to knit, but I love it. We've got a little bit of twisted rib at the bottom there. So yeah, I pretty much followed it to pattern. Did some waist decreases at the bottom, like the pattern tells you to. Um, in terms of my length, I prefer the length of my purpley one, which is slightly longer than this green one. So the green one's very cropped. I think it's knit two pattern. The purple one I made a touch longer and I've made this one a touch longer again. So it's still going to be cropped. It's just not going to ride up quite as much, um, which means I could probably wear it with jeans and feel quite comfortable in that. Um, even though I'm a big girl yeah, and I never thought that I would wear crop tops. It it doesn't show anything. I wear high waisted stuff anyway, so I feel comfortable wearing them. I think actually it's more flattering to, sh to wear that than wear something oversized on my body shape. So I'm quite happy with that, but I can't believe how much I've knit. So 
nearly finished the ribbon. The ribbon gets about three inches. So nearly finished that, maybe on two inches right now. Um, so another inch on the ribbing. And then all I do is pick up here, knit maybe an inch, maybe two inch. No, that's probably an inch. And then a little bit of ribbing on the sleeves. And then I have another little spring sorrel. <sighs> I love it. I love how quick it is, doesn't it? It is much quicker than a finger and weight jumper. And all of my other jumpers pretty much have been finger and weight jumpers. So I love this. Um, I do have yarn. It's crazy. So I'm thinking like, oh, you could knit another one. You have so much yarn up there in stash. And I have yarn. I had initially knit um, a cozy classic raglan in uh life in the long grass in these blue colorways um that somebody bought me for my birthday i think it might have been my wee mum got me a, a sweater quantity for my birthday um but i didn't like i didn't like it i didn't like the size i chose it was too big but it wasn't boxy and it wasn't neat enough I just didn't like the size. I, was, I should have either gone up a size or gone down a size. And I didn't do either of those things. So I knit it, didn't wear it, ripped it all out. Because the yarn was expensive and it was beautiful yarn. And I thought, I can't waste life in the long grass yarn. So I frogged the whole thing and it's all sitting upstairs in stash. And there's definitely enough to knit one of these. But then I thought, do I really need four? Of the same thing so i was trying to think of how i might do this a similar vibe but not the same and i was thinking what i could do is instead of doing this stitch continue the twisted rib the whole way down and maybe that might be nice like a little follow oh, this essentially the same recipe but instead of doing this special twist um stitch just continue my twisted rib into like little points and it might be nice because it would look kind of like icicles with the light blue don't know i might and then i have from years ago many years ago two years three years ago now i have a dk um advent calendar that i got from giddy aunt yarns and i haven't really done anything with any of it that's a lie. I did start making a hexagon blanket, like a crochet blanket. <sighs> One crochet blanket is enough. I did not need a hexagon crochet blanket too. So um, I kind of got rid of that. Did I get rid of it or is it still sitting upstairs? I think I got rid of that. So I did use some of the mini skeins in that, which is annoying because I used the colours that I like the most. Uh, and then it just never materialised. I should have really put it together into like a little pillow, but I just was so sick of it, I couldn't look at it. <laughs> so, um, but I do have a fair amount of yarn left from that. The only thing is, I'm a bit of a control freak when it comes to yarn management and yarn colours and stuff, and I like things planned out. I don't like doing wild. I wish I was a... Uh, like a just marlet and go crazy kind of person and i'm not that person mm -mm. so i haven't done anything with it yet and it's 100 percent where i know there's no nylon nylon in it so i can't make socks with them i could make socks with them but it would burn through it would be a waste so i haven't decided what i'm doing with those but i want to do something with them but i definitely think the life in the long grass blues would make a nice spring sorrel with a little bit of something something extra going on there so <laughs> you can't leave I got a bit and I've got a little I don't know where I got this from Etsy probably and there's a little schnauzer um what's that called beginning of round marker there's a little schnauz so yeah this will be finished for next time. It definitely will. And I might even have cast on the other one. I don't know. It's nice knitting. So I've, so I've knit socks. 
I got a bit bored. I got out of my sock mojo. Um, so it's nice to have something specific there. A little hoohy bag. Love. Can't believe I did it. So that'll be an FO next time. Speaking of FOs. These are my little Easter socks that I knit with leftovers uh, from a couple of different Easter sets last year. I love this colour combo. It's so pretty. Um, this used up every single little scrap I had of so I think I said a couple of episodes ago that I pulled together. I was tempted by um, some mini skin sets and I resisted. I get like, I'm actually surprising myself with how much I'm resisting buying a lot of yarn. I think part of that is that I changed how I budget my spending. So I watched a lot of people on YouTube who do like, cash stuffing videos and I wish I was a cash stuffer -er, but I don't use cash but anyway the idea behind it is that you get little envelopes for every specific thing they call them sinking funds you put money away so I did that for my yarn buying I've got a little set amount of money that I have um every month that I put into it and it, it has really made me think twice about just ordering stuff because I want to use up my stash. I want to get through a good chunk of my stash. Um, <laughs> there's a lot there. Um, so that is a big ask. But yeah, I want to get through a good chunk of my stash. I don't want stuff sitting there neglected when I really loved, loved it when I bought it. I want to be the kind of person that buys yarn and then knits with it. You know, like normal people buy things and then knit with them but anyway um blah 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 all that to say I dug around in my stash found some eastery mini skein leftovers from last year that were all I might say 10-15 grams each because I hadn't really used very much of the mini skein when I was making shorties last year so anyway I had 60 maybe 70 grams and this knit two little matching socks because I'm a little bit neurotic and I was knitting on these and my mum spotted them while I was down home and she was like I want them so I cut in a little heel so that they fit mum's tiny little feet she's a size four um but not Heather does have a reputation of putting her hand knit socks in the tumble dryer and them coming out tiny and then she puts them on and pretends like they still fit and I see them and I'm like mum why is your sock so small <laughs> did they go in the washing machine if they did so no doubt these might end up in a similar fit but I have enough yarn I can knit my mama some socks when she wants them so those are mums. Made the mistake of bringing down my little, um, um, what's that? What's the yarn there called? La Bien Amie socks. I was doing the little coffee shop socks. Left one in mums and she spotted those, so she wants those too. But I've already put the heel in one. It was a heel flap and gusset on that one. And I don't know if that'll fit her. Not that she minds. She'll wear big socks. But, um, so she's got her eye on those two, but I haven't finished that other one. So... Little pair of socks for mummy. And I'm so glad that I used up all my yarn. Good to get it out of my stash. So that's my finished object. That's my big project. I have one more project to share with you. Which is a bit insane. Have I done any other knitting? Vera has knit a couple of tube sock tubes for me. I have to put some heels on. Um, and I probably have to cast something else for her. I like to keep like two, two pairs of socks in rotation for Vera because she goes through them so quickly. I can't keep up with her in socks and I have to get her another little knitting 
needle so I should really do that and then bring those down um, so I'll see what else I cast on for Vera she just likes knitting the sock tubes and then I put the toes and the heels in which works out well because all the men in the family tend to get socks then so that's good I do have that but I don't have it to show you what else have I been knitting on I did pick up my little granny square blanket yesterday it's not a huge amount of progress to show you on that I've just been putting the white border around which takes longer than I anticipated um so I've been puckling away on that um I have not touched my what fade shawl and I haven't ripped out I haven't frogged my other two raglans that I did have on the needles I think they're just gonna go they're just gonna be frogged I'm not feeling either of them or not it's not really the time for raglans either I think and I meant to say this I think I have enough yarn left over so if you think about this right just to go back, I'm very scatterbrained today. Just to go back to this one, right? So I only have the rest of my ribbon to do here, maybe another inch. Then I have this medium color. It's gonna go in my uh, oh, cuffs, my sleeves, and then slightly darker color um, for the ribbon on the sleeves. So I have quite a lot of yarn left. Let me show you my leftovers. So I won't need any more of that first colour. How beautiful is that? I didn't know whether to start with this, but I'm glad I did because I don't have anything like this knit up and I think it's nice. It's nice to get a bit out of my comfort zone because I would have started it with pink and we know that I like pink. But that's another leftover. And then my three, I have two middle colours that look very similar, but actually one is slightly lighter. This is a slightly lighter one than that one. So I will use an inch on either side of this and then maybe an inch for my ribbing out of this. And then I have my darkest colour. It's such a subtle fade. It's beautiful. And I'll have my darker colour. Do you an interesting fact is that uh, Neil is colourblind? Like, severely colorblind so he is so colorblind that in school in the UK or at least Northern Ireland anyway they send a nurse out to primary school and they do a little test of your eyesight and part of those tests is to see if you're colorblind so Neil did the test and um, the nurse thought that he was just being bold and wasn't taking the test seriously and just making up answers because he was so severely colorblind <laughs> that she was like there's no way there's no way you're doing this properly you're taking the piss and then so he was referred to a specialist um the specialist had never seen <laughs> the results that Neil was given so he's so colorblind all that to say he thought that he sees a huge difference between this color and the rest and I really don't, he, he, this looks purple to Neil, which is just, there's like a purple undertone, but it's just so interesting that that's what Neil, Neil picks this up as if it's a totally different colour that doesn't fit in with this fade. Isn't that so weird? I think it's probably because the blues and, I don't know, his eyes are picking up the blue in it, obviously, more than the rest. That's so interesting to me. Probably not that interesting for you, but. I find it interesting. It also means that there's a lot of pink in our hearts and Neil didn't know about it because he just thinks it's grey. <laughs> and he didn't know about it until our estate agent came around and was doing a little inspection and she goes, there's so much pink in here. And I'm like, Neil doesn't know. <laughs> Not that Neil cares about pink being in the house, but he just didn't know there was quite so much of it. There he is. <laughs> So, yeah, all that to say, I think I can get another t-shirt out of this. Maybe a little Jessie May, like, tank. One of those little, um, you know, the very fitted ones? Because um, I did knit one, you probably, did I show it on the podcast? I did knit one, but it's supposed to be oversized, and I didn't. It just, I have narrow shoulders compared to 
dress for me so it just fell off and it annoyed me but she's got that one was intentionally at a large gauge I just didn't like how it fitted on my body but I think I would like the negative ease tank tops like an outline tee or something outline bralette I think something that I would wear as a layering piece underneath other things obviously um but I think I would have enough yeah I think I'll have enough to do another top out of that, which is pretty good value for money. Out of a five skein set to get two tops out of, it's pretty good. I think I can stretch that. Definitely. Especially if it's a layering piece, I'll not be as, I keep wanting to say neurotic, I'll not be as careful about my color placement. If it's just a little layering piece. Um. Yeah. Anyway, I have one more project to show you. All that waffling aside. Let's see. <gasps> Can I just tell you as well? Before, like, we will get to this project. It's not a huge excitement, but we will get to it. Can I just tell you as well that another set of my chai gu, uh, needles broke? So that's the third set that's gone skew with. I had one cable. It's the cable as well. It's not the needle. One cable snapped, the little metal thing came off the wire a wee while ago. And then the same thing happened this week. And then Gran's been knitting with um, those, they're all the interchangeable ones that I've been buying. And Gran has been knitting one with a set of needles that have come from my actual set, not ones that I've bought separately. And the needle won't tighten into the cord which means that the needle keeps coming loose and it's very annoying um so that's very disappointing because i love chow goo but i'm not knitting that much to be wearing through them i think um so yes that was annoying also the <laughs> the chow goo um needles that are in my set that I bought for sock mitten uh are too sharp for Vera so they kind of poke through her, her finger and her solution was to take a nail file to my child needles and file it down what you doing with your nail file gran what you, what <laughs> she was like I just filed it down made it a bit blunt and I was like okay <laughs> and they're expensive but okay it, it, it must have been sharp with the pierced at finger but still don't be fine into my needles vera she doesn't watch this because if she did watch it i get some big chapel i think my auntie karen might watch it so don't tell her what i said anyway on to the last project i need to show you it's kind of a two in one I made myself another little bag. Now you know that I hate sewing. You, and you know that I tell you every time I hate sewing, but then I persist in sewing. I think it's because I like things to be perfect. How very Virgo of me. And in sewing, I just am not good enough yet. And I really have been trying and practicing and I've been trying for about four years and it's just not going the way I want it to go. But I persevere and anyway, I made a little bag. Oh, how adorable is this? So this is the Can Do Sewing Patterns. You can get them on Etsy. I can't remember what this one's called, but you wouldn't know. It comes in like a three sizes. So this is the smallest size, which is perfect for sock. Um, I think I got these off either Lovecrafts or Wool Warehouse, just as fat quarters. Um, cute, little speckles, very Eastery. And then I had this little ribbon from Sister in Green, I think. And it has some pockets on the inside. Very impressed with myself. And I even did a little Notions pouch. Keep all my little bits and bobs in there. 
Yeah, so I've been meaning to make that for a little while and then I just, because I had the time off, I was like, I'm going to sew. Because sewing, like, this takes other people 15, 20 minutes to do. It's genuinely a five-hour affair with me. Which means I can listen to my little um, audiobooks and love life that way. But it, it takes a long time. I even did some little top stitching. Don't look too closely at it. I do some little top stitching. So yeah, I just want it to be perfect. But it's not. But anyway, it's housing a little sock. And I have had this. This is probably one of the oldest yarns in my stash. Maybe I've shown this before. It has had many life forms. This is a hedgehog fibres. Skein, I think it's called Harvest. Uh, it was a club colorway. I joined one of their clubs. It was like a three month club. Back when I was first getting into knitting and first introduced to hand dyed yarns, Hedgehog Fiber was all the rage. They're down in Cork. Um, and even though they're in Cork and I'm up north, it's expensive to ship here. But anyway, um, Yeah, it's been sitting in my stash for five years, six years nearly. And it initially went into a shawl and then that shawl got frogged. And then I think it went into some sort of colour work something and then that got frogged. And now it's taking its final resting form of a little ridge song. <laughs> Because I wanted to cast something on, my brain wasn't in, I needed something smaller than my jumper um, and I wanted to cast a sock on, I'd finished my little Easter socks but I didn't want to wind up yarn, it was very late at night and I couldn't be bothered winding up and this one was already caked and ready to go so I cast on, I did a 2 by 2 rib for the cuff and I swapped up to a 3 by one for the rest of the sock. Did it until I thought it looked like a decent length and then I added a little heel flap and gusset that I've just finished the heel flap and return and now I'm starting to build the gusset. This is my favourite heel to knit. As quick as these little afterthought heels are. I just, I could knit a tube of a sock and leave the afterthought heel for so long. I just prefer this. I don't know why, but I do. I kind of have it memorized in my head, but I do follow. If you need a pattern for the for the heel flap and gusset, um, Tracy Miller's patterns um, are great, and I know for sure that that's in the coffee talk socks. Uh, this particular one is from the coffee talk socks pattern. It's nice and square which I like. You do get ones, I think the Hermione's Everyday Sock one, it's the first one I did. They didn't do a slip stitch heel flap, they did, um, an, I think they called it like an altered or a different eye of partridge, a modified eye of partridge heel flap, where basically you, the slips alternate. But it's four row repeat, takes a wee bit of brain power to kind of memorize. Whereas right, a little slip stitch is just easier to do. And then I think the Hermione's Everyday Socks have more of a pointed triangle here. Whereas these ones are more square. So, yeah. It's nice that this is out of my stash. Being used. It's been there for way too long. I feel like that's way too long for something to be sitting in stash. So, and I needed something that I could work away on and I do love the bright pinks in this. It's not a yarn I would probably have picked up, but I love the new, the like neon pinks and the slight purples in there too. Um, so that's Hedgehog Fibre. I have a feeling that this Hedgehog Fibre, another one that I have, they call a sock yarn and it is, I think, a 90% merino and a 10% nylon. Very small nylon content. And this is an old 
relatively speaking, an old skein. It feels so different to knit with than a 7525. 7525 is much plumper, for one. This spin on this is not very tight, so it's a little bit splitty. And it it feels like cotton, to be quite honest with you. Like when I'm knitting with it, it feels like cotton. It's definitely not cotton. It's definitely a sock yarn. And I think it's the 90% 10, the 90 10. It feels like cotton. It's got that kind of, mm, kind of like a, it's not quite a crunch and not quite a squeak. But do you know what I mean? Or if you if you felt the cotton, you get that, that feeling. That's what it feels like to me. But anyway, I actually really love, and I debated whether or not to do this. I love the inside of this more. I love that pattern more than the other way. This just feels cool. It's very different. But I just, it would have been a bit of a faff trying, if, you sure it's Natalie, what are you trying to say? Basically what I'm trying to say is if I had done an afterthought heel, I would probably have turned it inside out and put the afterthought heel in that way so that these would be on the outside. But because I did the heel flat and gusset, I just kept it like this. It looks very small. It'll stretch and it'll kind of hug my feet, which is good and what I want. So that's all my knitting. How have I talked for 38 minutes? Neil will have some cutting art today at the start. But yeah, that's a lot of chitter chatter for me. And then I have only one yarn purchase to show you because I think the last time I recorded I think my little lonely mountain skeins came in yes they did this is the March Club colorway from Beehive Yarns 100% you'll have got your yarn by now surely you'll have got your yarn by now but if you have not look away because I'm about to show the uh, inspo picture that came with this. This is the Simple Pleasures Yarn Club by um, Beehive Yarns and the word for this month is Blossom. Beautiful. I'll show you the little thing in the back. That's their details. What does it say? It is true as they say that the blossoms of spring are all the more precious because they bloom so briefly. By Murasaki Shiki. Shikibu. I apologise. Murasaki. Um, ooh, I actually saw a lot of cherry blossom today when I went out for a coffee. It's so lovely. Anyway, <laughs> are you ready for this yarn? Look away if you don't want to spoil it. Now, I get this on sock base. Sh shock base. Um, on sparkle socks. So this one is a gold sparkle. 75% superwash merino. 20% nylon, 5% stain. Me. Oh, look at the sparkle. So that's Blossom. Obviously a part of that. Look at these. And look at the green. Love, love, love the green. And I'm not a green person. She says while wearing a green jumper. I do like some green. And I love this green. It's kind of like a, like a mucky green. Isn't that beautiful? Like, I think this is very similar to the tool colour that I knit my diaphanous raglan out of. Gorgeous. Absolutely love it. Love her little label. Love everything about this. Love the club. <laughs> so what happens is you get the club, the club ships at the end of the month. So I'll get the April club at the end of April. But I've been loving this. And I wasn't planning on having the club for the whole year, but I love this. And it does kind of satiate that urge I have to buy a lot of sock yarn because I just want to buy all the sock yarn. And I've been looking at the Pixie Yarn website and oh my God, there are so many yarns on that site at the minute. 
that I want. They're just speaking to my soul. They're speaking to me and they're saying, Natalie, you must do your stash. But I don't want to buy just one single skein. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to see if I have a project and then buy a couple of skeins and knit something beautiful. But the other thing is that it's so my colours that I already have a lot of <laughs> similar colours in my stash. So I've been drilling over those yarns for a wee while. I think what I'll do this weekend is have a look and see what patterns I want to knit. Have a look and see what's in stash already. And then maybe make a little purchase. That's everything for me. Can you believe I talked for nearly three quarters of an hour and I've only three knitting projects? You can tell I'm back on four. <laughs> um, thank you so much for sitting with me. Um, I hope you have a lovely day. And I will see you in two weeks.